Aslan here for the cinemas, eh? As we all know, it was especially hard to be a uh, patron of the cinemas this year. Um, I did go see Tenet when I got the chance. In fact, I have a Christopher Nolan book now. Um, saw it, recorded audio of it, intended to make a review, did not make a review. Didn't feel like editing it. Um, then saw Mank, not in the theaters, but at home, intended to make a review, didn't make a review. And then I saw Wonder Woman, 1984, and it's just the perfect amount of mix of good and bad, frustrating and pleasing, disappointing and not, that I'm going to finish this. I'm going to make a review out of this. When talking about Wonder Woman 1984, it's almost impossible to not talk about its predecessor. And that just comes down to the fact that it was just so positively received. You had a commercial and critical success that came out of a seriously barren DCEU in terms of quality. And it all came down to the fact that it was an individual story. It was not connected to anything else in the greater scheme of the universe. It was its own thing. And it proved to studios that you can tell an individual story for these superhero movies, even in this age of extended universes, and it can work. And look at Joker, breaking the billion dollar barrier, getting a nod for best picture by the Oscars. It completely changed the course of the DCU and it's led to better movies. And you can see a similar attempt with Wonder Woman 1984 with this 80 setting, its distinguishing factor that was trying to set apart itself from other superhero movies that were gonna be released at the time. But you quickly find out that it's just a facade. This setting is used for nothing more than a paper thin commentary on 80s greed, materialism, and Cold War hysteria. And it's been done dozens of times over in more nuanced and savage critiques of the Reagan era. From Blood Simple to American Psycho, from Blade Runner to Robocop, from Wall Street to Wolf of Wall Street. These messages are mere platitudes by now. They've been told so many times over that it's hard to take Wonder Woman 1984 seriously on an emotional level when its main message is greed is bad, especially in the 80s, and it's just been done so many times before. It wants to talk about 80s excess, but it fails to understand that it itself is a product of excess. It fails to respect the viewer's intelligence and how the 80s was portrayed and is still portrayed in Hollywood, and it, fail, and it feels very preachy because of that, but very unintelligent preaching at that. You have the Porsches at the beginning. You have people stealing stuff. You have people eating ridiculously large amounts of high cholesterol food. That shot in the mall especially, it's just like, really? Like, that, that's what you want to tell your viewer? That this hasn't been done so many times before that we can't try anything new? It feels very one-dimensional, this entire message. And you have a villain essentially built on that, that greed is bad. And the idea that truth always beats greed, it just seems naive now. Like, in Wonder Woman, it felt like it earned the message of humanity because it had an interesting spin on it. That she is looking to destroy this one source of evil and everything goes back to normal, and it doesn't. And that was a really powerful moment. But here, you have this entire story built around this idea of you have to renounce your wishes. You can't have everything you want. And so you know that, spoiler alert, Steve is going to die. You know that this person is going to be defeated because they have to renounce their wishes. It keeps on building up to what you already know is going to happen. And so by the end, you're just like, well, the truth is better than lies, ladies and gentlemen. I really learned a lot from that film. And while we're talking about the 80s setting, I mean, we have to talk about the production design and practical effects. There was a lot of hype in recreating the 80s here and trying to emulate it, and it just doesn't pay off. And a lot of that has to do with the DC area. It's a very non-expressive area. It's very plain in terms of its coloring, and that just wasn't the 80s. When you have random people wearing all these crazy 80s outfits, and you have a very plain background, it's just really hard to buy into it all. It feels very mismatched. It feels like all the more fake and takes you out of the experience because it's clear that there are masking techniques used in order to hide the non-80s filming locations that's filmed in the present day. And you don't feel that at all in Stranger Things. The whole thing feels as though it's radiating the 80s off the screen. And granted, that comes down to location, but if you're going to pick the DC area and try to you know, have random characters wearing all these 80s clothing, it's very hard to buy into the setting. And even something like Maxwell Lord's Office, where you could have, it's very clear that it's trying to take inspirations from Wolf of Wall Street and all these callers, and it just feels so much more plainer. Like, even in something in Wolf of Wall Street, where there's a lot less money to be used for the production design, it just feels so much more realized than this. And going on with the 80s and the practical effects and stuff used for that, the practical effects in this film sheesh it just doesn't feel utilized properly at all and a lot of that just comes to the fact that the fight scenes of this film are just really bad the first opening scene the opening sequence is just 
so long for no reason at all. There's no exciting parts of it. There's nothing clever about it. And that just goes for all the fight scenes. You have people doing the same hand-to-hand -hand nonsense that you can have in regular old films when you have literal superheroes here that you could be doing totally fantastical stuff with. And it's just all the same. You have these fight scenes that you're having half CGI, half practical, and you're cutting when people are hitting each other. Just go all CGI at that point. Like I was watching Captain America Civil War the other day, and it's just like, I know it's all CGI, but at least I get to see people hitting each other. And I'm a child of the John Wick era. If you were going to show me a fight scene, have the people hit each other. And if not, use CGI all the way. There's no way, that there's no reason that they should go with these sloppy in-betweens and stuff like the White House fight sequence where you just have like a horrible mix of CGI and shying away from people actually making contact and having stunt doubles. And the final fight scene is just really exemplary of that, where you just have Wonder Woman and Cheetah just going around in circles trying to like grapple with each other when you could be have them actually fighting each other in inventive ways. And there's just no excuse for it at that point. After Daredevil, where you have, you know, just hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes of pure genius and you have so many tools at your disposal here, there's no excuse for these play fight scenes to be this boring. And not to mention the action scenes feel feel very plugged in, like they are, they're trying to meet a quota, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they take away from the best part of this film, and that is the relationship that is formed with Chris Pine and Gal Gadot's acting chops here. They both are great when they're together. Chris Pine is the best part of this film by a mile. He gets the airy nature of his character perfectly. He reminded me a lot of Chris Evans in the original Avengers. He plays a man out of time as a part of comedy. He is very lax the entire film, and because of that, he's very charming. He's a very likable guy, and when he goes, it's, it stings. But he also doesn't you know, make these grand statements about humanity here because he knows it's just not his place to do so. He's already died, so it doesn't really matter that much to him, and because of that, I really felt attached to him, and I thought he was much better here than he was in the original film, and he was pretty good in that one, too, and Gal Gadot has a great scene where she has to say goodbye to him, but a lot of that doesn't feel earned because of how crazy the stakes get in this film and just how these other characters detract from it. And then all the all the supporting aspects. Kristen Wiig, I knew from day one she was a miscast as Cheetah, and I was right. It's so incredibly hard to take her seriously once she assumes Cheetah's power. She doesn't play that role well at all near the end. And even near the beginning, it, her character, it's a writing problem and it's an acting problem. It is something where this is a story that's been told before in Amazing Spider-Man 2. She is Jamie Foxx's Electro 2AT, and it's so painful to watch these awkward moments, not because they're actually awkward, but because you know what's going to happen. We've seen this a dozen times before, and we don't need to see it again, just like the themes of the film. We've seen these awkward characters before evolve into something greater, and the similarities to Jamie Foxx's Electro just made it seem so boring, and her stuff, it just seems dragged out, and her stuff with Pedro Pascal especially just feels like it keeps on going and going and going and they keep on trying to hit laughs and it doesn't feel, fit the rest of the film totally at all. Whereas Chris Prine's comedy and his acting overall feels very breezy. This feels very citric. It feels very acidic in some cases. It feels like it's, you know, filled with these scenes that keep on trying to make you feel pity for them. And there's, a, there's a lot of stake in getting you to care about her and they all just don't work. And you want to you, you wanna talk about total errors? Let's talk about the third act of this film. The third act was the worst part of the first Wonder Woman, it's universally agreed upon. It's almost close to a fact. And this one is probably just as bad, maybe even worse. Granted, it's succinct, it gets this film over with, which I appreciate, but you have a, a bumbling Ronald Reagan, a byproduct of this 80s commentary, um, declaring war against the Soviets, not just Cold War, but a hot war. You have the United States and the Soviet Union firing nuclear armaments against each other. You have people wishing each other dead. You have people wishing um, to have nuclear weapons pop out of nowhere. You have civil unrest in the streets, nightmarish imagery. It's not the end of the world's at stake here. The end of the world's actually occurring in this film, and you see it happening. And then you have you remember back to like an hour ago, and you're like, oh yeah, um, remember when like Steve was talking about a trash can? It's just so jarring, the tonal shift here in this film. And then you, of course, have a very predictable deus ex machina that undoes it all, but it's not even a good one. It doesn't even patch it all up. You have, uh, you have certain people that die, not even, you know, showing them get resurrected. You have certain, um, you have the wall that was resurrected by Maxwell Lord. You have it crumbling down on nearby villages. You don't address that at all, and that new people are dying. And the... 
the third act as a whole resolves fails to resolve stuff after that. They patch it all up, and then you don't understand what Cheetah's is going through. Granted, you get some of Maxwell Lord, but they spend too much time on him anyway. You have no understanding of how her relationship ends with Diana. You don't really get a satisfying end to how Diana lives on in this world. It's a, a, a third act that fails not only as an act of resolution, but also just as a tonally satisfying continuation of the two hours or so of runtime that happened before it. And while I could talk about Maxwell Lord, and I could talk about some of my other minor criticisms, I ultimately feel as though that just, just that ending summarizes my experience with the film, its failings, and also its failings in respect to the greater superhero genre. Um, it reminded me a lot, this lack of consequences here, and the destruction taking place of Captain America Civil War, and how Captain America Civil War not only respected the consequences that happened before it of all these end-of-the-world plots and what was going on, but it also was focused intensely upon just the characters, that its ending was not about the end of the world, but it was about the values of these different characters, and your investment was solely about them trying to find resolution and trying to stay together, even though that you knew that by all means that there was no reason for them to do that. And the emotions of it, of Tony finding about, out about his parents' death, it was very impactful because you were just focused on that and about characters. You weren't focused on just the overall plot of the film and what was going on there. And Wonder Woman 1984, I think, does a great disservice to itself and that it doesn't respect either of those aspects. It doesn't talk, it doesn't give respect to the greater consequences at play, something that is really is touched upon in something like Civil War and Infinity War. And it also doesn't give respect to Diana herself. You don't have Steve at play in that final act and there's no reason for her to be fighting anymore. It's just for the sake of the world. There's nothing to her character in which she's fighting for anymore. There's nothing that you can care about her in that moment. There's nothing that proves herself as a better person there that you don't already know. And it also reminded me of this film of something when it came to the invisible jet of something like Spider-Man Homecoming, where you have an ending, once again, that you know looks at the stakes and just thinks about character, about Peter Parker and how you get this version of Tom Holland Spider-Man to work and how he proves himself in this moment as a hero. And Wonder Woman 1984 fails on both fronts. It doesn't talk about Diane, it doesn't make you care about her in the moment and talk about the implications for her and it doesn't respect the greater ethics of being a superhero and what goes on and the consequences that she caused by giving in to the wishes and not being able to stop the villains earlier. I don't think... I just think the film did not work. I don't think that it did anything in respect to the superhero genre and what it means to be a hero. I don't think it was anything, a commentary on that, on anything important in its overall morals because of its 80s redundancy. I don't think that I came away with it appreciating anything more about the characters, about the lessons it had to share to me, or even the action and the progression of the plot itself. It seemed as though that the only reason I was there was to essentially appreciate Chris Pine and Gal Gadot's acting chops and how you could have superhero movies that could take a later approach. Something like WandaVision, perhaps, where it's so focused on just the romance of the characters and it can be compelling and the best part of your film. But as it stands overall, Wonder Woman 1984 was a very disappointing sequel that failed to live up to the predecessor in almost every way. Um, if I had to give the film a score, I would probably give it around a four. Um, I, with all the criticisms, it always sounds like I'd go lower, but I really value the work that Gal Gadot and Chris Pine did in this film, so I will you know, bring it to that level. Um, but it also was not even the best uh, film I saw in theaters this year. I still think that Tenet, which I had a lot of problems with, was still a better film. I think this film, in terms of recent movies, I think it's a lot better than Mank, even though it's you know quite bad itself. But I also don't think um, it doesn't have the artistic um, intelligence to it uh, to live up to something like Tenet. So overall, a disappointing review, but at least it willed me to make a video. So that is all for today. Enjoy the rest of your holiday season, and hopefully I will be back with more reviews.